and says, um, let me see what I can do for you. I'll tell you what, how would you like to have me put a stock on? <clears throat> you're the, you know, so neat. And the guy, she says, yeah, that sounds good. So sure enough, he designs a beautiful, really neat cutout stock in a form of an eagle. Okay. For the butt of the pistol. And the guy, the owner says, well, be sure to put it underneath the handle so that the slide will come forward yep. or backwards. And so sure enough, he designs it, cuts it all out in the computer, made it all aluminum, puts it on the gun and they take it to the test firing range. Well, he said he wanted to have a girl, a woman to fire it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she fired it, bam, that sucker kicked back like crazy. <laughs> and she says, yeah, it's a little better, but I think what you ought to do is put a damn uh, pad on it. Yep. And he goes, yeah, that's a good idea. So sure <laughs> enough, he puts a pad on it, and then he sprayed it black to match the gun, and he had the girl come out that owned the gun. And she fired it. And when she fired it, it still went backwards. Bam, bam. But she had it planted right in this, what do you call it, the... the um, scoop yeah. here whatever you call it mm -hmm. and she says yeah that's better <laughs> <laughs> in other words it, i guess she her body absorbed oh, a lot better than her wrists would yeah yeah and uh man with that 50 caliber that sucker still kicked back <laughs> i'm going what in the hell is a woman doing a 50 caliber i don't know why when that thing went off even with me listening on the uh on my speakers, mm -hmm. Whew, that sucker still went off like a cannon. And then he designed, the guy come out, he wanted the FN guns. Yep. The uh, machine guns. The guy wanted to have four of them mounted like the old um, ones they had on the aircraft carriers, you know? Where the guy fired it this way and he had four guns. Mm -hmm. And he could not get it synchronized. Designed <clears throat> all kinds of stuff. And uh, the guy wound up firing them two at a time instead of four. But he wanted to have two handles, triggers like this, that would one squeeze this bank and the mm -hmm. other one would squeeze the other bank simultaneously. And it wouldn't work. And then finally, at the end of the movie, he says, I'll do it. <laughs> And then the other thing he designed was a um, grenade launcher that you could fire um, either simultaneously or one at a time. And it carried um, a, a strip on it like a machine gun. Yeah, okay. And boy, that sucker was powerful. And then he designed, he wanted to design... wanted to design a silencer for it for a grenade launcher <laughs> yeah and at the end of the movie he he made it work <laughs> that thing was that long so i really enjoy watching that program man and this guy what he does with guns it's amazing that he can reconvert he had an old AK-47 that he wanted for competition shooting. Mm -hmm. No, an Uzi. That's what it was, an Uzi. Well, the guy wanted it for competition, and he souped it up. He put a shorter stroke in it with a, you know, the, uh, what do you call it? The stroke or something would fire faster than the standard. Okay. And uh, Faster rate of fire. Yeah. And he designed it, and it worked. That guy's a genius, you know. That, that For designed. Sons of Guns? Yeah. Yeah. And he uh, he loves, he, he wants to get, oh yeah, he designed another one for um, a helicopter. For when the guys, you know, on a field. And he designed a special um, swivel that would go up and down and over so it wouldn't shoot the props off. <laughs> yeah. And it worked. Uh, you got to have that, yeah. Mm -hmm. It worked. Because he's looking for government contracts, you know. So 
was really amazing. Where this guy comes up. <clears throat> I imagine you could pull up a lot of that stuff on your screen. Huh? Um, I'm not sure. I think they're always off by one season. Mm. You know, so last season, Sons of Guns would be. Well, this is a newer season now. This mm -hmm. just started a new season. Yep. The other thing I love to, to watch is American res Restorations. And that's what I love to do. I love to take this old stuff that don't work and, and restore it. And it's so interesting, this guy, what this guy does, this stuff. He takes all antiques that don't work, and he, he paints them up, restores them, and sells big bucks for them. Unreal. Wish I had half the talent that guy had. <laughs> Well, I hope my government check comes tomorrow. Um, we, well, he said they're going to mail it out the 22nd, right? Is that the oh, refund? This one, yeah. But it'll probably be back by Friday, I guess. What does it have? A, a uh, wider lens on it? No, I'm not sure. I'm just looking, doing videos. If you get into an auto accident, I've got proof. <laughs> Don't even mention it. I had my share of those. Yep. Yeah, but you've always been rear-ended, right? Every one, thank God. You know, I, I can tell people they don't believe it. I have never in my career caused an accident. Mm -hmm. I keep telling people I must have a magnet on the back of my trunk. of spaghetti, huh? <coughs> and you had extra meat sauce, too. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't normally eat that much in that bowl. Like last time, I didn't have that much. And you ate all the bread. Mm -hmm. So I had a piece. I was fine. So. Like, you were a hungry boy today. I haven't eaten all day. Well, that's your fault. Uh -uh, I save it. I ate twice for lunch. <laughs> no, and that's the it. truth. Mm. I have to lie, well, all I really did have when I came back to the doctor's office, I had one little bit of, one little burger mm -hmm. at Wendy's and a baked potato. Yeah. That was my lunch. It's actually not a bad lunch. Last night I went over to uh, Subway. <clears throat> And I had a foot long for five bucks. Every one of them there is now five bucks. Okay. Yeah, this is February. Yeah, and I had um, Black Forest ham, ham and uh, turkey. Turkey. And damn, it was good.
Kentucky Rose steak. Yep. Yeah, big salad put on top of it. I remember uh, a woman um, at Scott Air Force Base at the subway right outside the gate mm -hmm. would have all of her fixings on the side, mm -hmm. and they would put it in a in one of those plastic containers, and she would have a salad mm -hmm. and then eat her Philly's cheese steak. Oh, okay. <laughs> So yeah, for buying a sub, she got a sub and a salad. Well, that's that's what I used to do over at the substation. Mm -hmm. When I ordered the subs, man, they put so much extra in it, I cut it off, and I made a big salad out of it. Yep. But I got a little bit ticked off from the other day because I had a free, um, free card, and I had a taste for a salad, which hey. It doesn't cost any more than a sub, and they wouldn't give it to me. Oh, uh, dear. I walked out. But you can buy, you can take any of the subs and convert it to a salad, and they'll do that. Well, yeah, they just put the meat on yeah. the top, and then they... Yeah, throw. they roll it up, mm -hmm. and then they cut it in strips. So I figured, hey, why didn't you do that? I paid for it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sure anxious to get back to DMARS. No, me, between DMARS and Thai Garden. Mm -hmm. And it's all right, I mean, it's a mile from the house. Yeah, well, you can go to an alternate, you know? Mm -hmm. She makes uh, fantastic Italian dishes. She also makes fantastic cakes and stuff, and pies and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And they're really good. I know her pan lasagna is just spectacular. Oh, yeah. So I'm not saying the sauce is robust. You know, a lot of people look at a robusto sauce and they think, oh, this makes the lasagna. No, man. The lasagna makes the lasagna. Mm -hmm. well, the, the sauce was just rich enough to bring out the flavors mm -hmm. and that was the end of that. The first time I ate at DMARS, I ordered spaghetti and meatballs. The very first dinner I had. Mm -hmm. Her meatballs were so close to my mother's and that's when I fell in love with them. The taste and everything was right there. And Jerry, Jerry used to alternate. He used to love uh, pizza with Pepperoni and sausage. Yeah. And that's all he ever ate. Pepperoni sausage. And uh, occasionally he would go to a meatball cell that she made. And man, that thing was like a dinner. And her meatball was monstrous. You know? Oh, yeah. Younger, I think I'd go back into restaurant business. And why? I loved it. I love dealing with people and you know serving good food. Yeah, that I could go for. Oh, excuse me. I like good food, but I like to eat it. I'll leave it to the bus boy to take care of the food boogers afterwards. sit down dinner, you know, the waitresses would come whatever you want with your drink or your 
dessert or whatever you have. And uh, fantastic waitresses. Oh, man. I was real lucky, man. And the, the people were so nice. Super Bowl 10. Yeah, man. What a blast. And the nice part of it was my beer suppliers would offer, would give me gifts for the Super Bowl guys that came in. We'd have a drawing. And they weren't cheap gifts either. Wrist watches and all kinds of neat stuff. One man rafts. Oh. You need to come down and get that. Lounge was a lot of fun too, but the chicks that came in there, you'd go crazy, man. Honest to God, they were real foxes. Oh yeah, the '70s was a <clears throat> was a great time. Mm -hmm. The '80s disco practically oh, yeah. rode all your pickup lines. Mm -hmm. We had one gal you loved her. You talked about a wild chick. Her name was Bullet, <laughs> and the reason why was you'd see her one minute. Hey, Bullet, how you doing? The next minute. Hey, Bullet. Bullet. Oh, Bullet, where you at? She's gone. <clears throat> One time, um, she shocked the hell out of me. That's when I was a lot younger. I had a little bit of hair in my head. But she walked up to me one day and she says to me, When are you going to take me out? I'm going, What? <laughs> Come on. Came to my house and made me a ball. No hesitation. That was the free 70s, yeah? Yeah, man. I mean, got a few drinks and we went to bed, you know, kind of ball. That's how them gals were. If they liked you, boy, we well, went. We had a lot of fun. We had country western music all the time. Mm -hmm. And dancing, country rock, you know. We had a variety band. We had easy listening, and we had uh, rock and roll, we had uh, bands that would play every music that you wanted, <clears throat> and it wasn't that expensive, you know, we had it just about every night of the week that place was going, if you like to go out, man, that would have been the place to go, honest to go, always something going on in there, and Jerry was the owner. And we had a rush. We had a restaurant too on the side. And one thing he didn't settle for, he went out and got um, rolls of a hamburger. Yeah. And everything was fresh that you ate. None of that package guy. He had hamburgers, he had steaks. Oh, sweet. Baked potatoes, you know, all that good stuff. Dinner, you went out and had a few beers or whatever. Yeah. Guys from Shaw, and they loved it. <laughs> we had a lot of GIs. And the, what, the second year that he, the first or second year that he opened, he shocked the hell out of me. He said he made something like, I think it was 200000 bucks in sales in one year. Yeah, but what were his expenses? They weren't that much. Because it was uh, low overhead, basically. You know, he had a couple of waitresses. And he built the lounge himself. You know, it was nothing. He, he remodeled it <coughs> on his own because it was a hell of a carpet. We had a pool table in there. Two pool tables. Uh, and, uh, you know, a little recreation everything, you know. So it was quite a... Um, nice place and then we had the reputation got so good that gals used to come in in formals you know from their prom, proms and everything oh wow yeah and the guys come in with their and they, they still had their tuxes out from the uh, proms and uh, a lot of women would walk in there and just want to be alone didn't want to get hit on nobody bothered 
they had their drinks, the guys would talk to them. They wouldn't get smart or nothing because Jerry and I monitored it real close, you know. Mm -hmm. And we had a fantastic reputation of uh, a lounge, not a you know sleazy bar. Or so those were a real happy times. To be honest to God. Fact. That's how uh, Roxy's or whatever you want to call it, Club Miami. Yep. They copied off of us. They were so jealous that they started doing what we did, and that stole a lot of our business. Yeah, but that's an after-hours bar now. Uh, I think it's a it's a bad spot though because there's a lot of a lot of shooting. Yeah, the airmen aren't allowed there anymore. No, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's been placed off over there. Are crazy. There's so many people getting shot over there. It's unreal. One time, the guy that owned the Shaw Lounge that we bought it from owned Roxy's too. Mm -hmm. So he had a uh, monopoly kind of thing going on. But it wasn't it wasn't a uh, cutthroat kind of thing, you know. So I gotta have a lot of good memories about that. I wish my old buddy Jerry was still alive. He'd be because he loved his women. Oh, man. He loved them oriental chicks. Oh. Well, you're oh. driving. You're driving fast today down there. Fast? Hey, you, normally, keep... you normally turn on your blinker at the at that one building. Well, I do it at night, really. Mm -hmm. I usually start at the building, but tonight I just run it by mouth. <laughs> so you overshot the bit. You yeah. were quite a distance from the building before you hit that signal. Ah, well, and uh, I mean, you can cut you, your. <laughs> I saw how fast you were coming in. You're like coming in pretty quickly, man. You were driving like a regular driver today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe all that spaghetti, huh? Yeah, probably making you feel good. I'm gonna hit the stop button here.